So we're in the section on work and energy, okay? There's two ways to organize your thoughts. Sum of all work equals exchange of kinetic energy or conservation of energy. And all, all the kinetic and potential energy initially plus any work that we add to our system equals the sum of the potential and kinetic energy fine. All right? So let's look at this problem in our notes. And let's organize our thoughts with conservation of energy. And I mean, obviously, we're going to do that because we're in this section. But why might we use conservation of energy in problems where you have an object that's kind of going from one initial point to one final point, and you're given or you want to know the velocity, which is what we have here. Five kilogram collar has an initial velocity of five meters per second when it's at A. It then travels along the smooth guide to determine the speed of the collar when it reaches point B. All right. So uh, make sure for all of these problems that we're doing that you can visualize where is it starting where is it ending right so this one starts at a and then it goes to b okay deter the point b is located just before the end of the curved portion the spring has an unchecked length of 100 millimeters and again again b is located just before the end of the curved portion of the rod all these problems, uh, like point B, it hasn't hit the wall yet. All right? We haven't done problems where we're, we're trying to find something after it hits the ground or hits the wall. So don't tell me like the final velocity there is zero. Uh, it's right before it hits the wall at B. So let's, I want to organize our thoughts with conservation of energy. Potential plus kinetic plus any, this is the non-conserved work. So this isn't. Uh, gravity and springs, that's just work like due to a force, uh, equals the final V plus T. And so maybe we could say, all right, th this is at A, this is at B right here. All right, so this potential energy could be both gravity and spring. This potential energy, both gravity and spring. So don't forget both of those. Now, some of these might be zero. Maybe you could go ahead and mark them zero right now. But I like to go ahead and write out the whole MGH plus one-half kx squared, the potential energy in gravity plus potential energy in a spring, plus the kinetic energy, one-half mv squared, plus any – I'm going to put fd, but technically this is sometimes integral fds – <laughs> might be zero. It's only FD if it's a constant force and it's in the same direction as if the force is in the same direction as the displacement. So over here, this would be MGH plus one half KX squared plus one half MV squared. All of this on the left is the initial. All of this on the right is final. Maybe we could say the height at A, the X when it's at A, the velocity when it's at A versus the height at B, the X when it's at B, the velocity when it's at B. Also, I, I like to sometimes write, okay, just remind myself, all right, I'm going from A to B. This is a conservation of energy equation from A to B. All right, so now let's, let's think about the potential energy in height, potential energy in the spring. Let's think about all these terms, right? I like to write that whole equation, and now I can break it up into bite-sized pieces. Okay, so MGH, you have to choose up to be positive, but you can set your ground to be wherever you want it to be. Uh, how about, I'm going to do this. I'm going to set, that's going to be my ground, which would make that height zero, and it would make this height when it's at A. Uh, you see, if, if that has a, a radius of 200, it would be 200 right there. Should we put 200? Uh, I think I'm going to put point 0.2 just because I know that G is 9.81 meters per second. The velocity is or meters per second squared. Velocity is in meters per second. Uh, so let's, let's do point 0.2, keep everything in meters. All right, the mass, a 5-kilogram collar, the G, 9.81. The height, 0.2 meters. Probably should write my units in there, but the units do work out. And remember, we're not going to put in negative 9.81. That's 
not acceleration, it's just G. Just MGH, just plug in the magnitude of G. All right, now one half kx squared. What is the, when it's at a, what is the x? What is the x? X is the, not the length of the spring, but the stretch of the spring. When it's at a, the spring would be that long, right? That length. What is that length? Well, it's a 200 by 200 rectangle, the hypotenuse. So 200 squared plus 200 squared. This length, 287. 0.8 millimeters. All right, that's the length of the spring. But what is the stretch? Well, if it's unstretched at 100 and now it's at 287, its x is 187.8. I think I'm going to do change that to meters. So let's say the one half k, and here's really why I need to change it to meters because that's 50 newtons per meter. And the x would be point so let's say 187.8 millimeters or 0.1878 meters squared don't forget to square these things uh and obviously don't square the mgh that's a common mistake is not squaring either the x squared or the v squared and if I kept it up with my units that might alert me to hey my units don't quite work out I need, need to Square that. All right. <clears throat> now the one half m v squared initial. Did it say it started from rest? Some of these say it starts from rest, so don't have to worry about that. But this one, it did not say started from rest. It has velocity of five. One half m v squared. Right there. All right. This F D is. Is there is there any force drawn on here? Is there any force that does work? Besides gravity, besides spring, we take we already took care of those. Is there a rope that is pulling it some distance? No, no. I mean, the only other forces here, uh, there's a normal force but, but of the rod on the collar, um, but those never do any work. Uh, so I'd say this problem has no external, no non-conserved work term. Mm -hmm equals the final mgh well it, it ends at zero it ends what would this x be well this length would be uh 400 and its unstretched length is 100 so 0.3 one half k 0.3 squared right there plus one half m v is what we're looking for. One half M V is what we're looking for. Not too bad. Not too bad. I mean, this is conservation of energy. The initial uh, potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy. Now it's just changed. It's just transferred. Some some of that potential energy becomes kinetic energy, and we're left with that energy right there. It's only one equation, right? This, this energy is only one equation. It's not an X equation or Y equation. It's a magnitude. And so we can only solve for one unknown and we're golden, right? We have one unknown, VB. Velocity of B, 5.33 meters per second. Box that in. This one actually doesn't tell me the direction of that. It could be plus or minus. It could be left, right, up, down at some angle. Uh, that's the speed. And, you know, if we ever wanted to figure out the, you know, we, we know the direction. But this equation doesn't give us directions. Okay, now let me add this. It, this, this one doesn't ask. And don't, don't answer questions I'm not asking. But another common thing for me to ask is, hey, what's the normal force of the rod on the collar down there at B? So, you know, even though this is a, an energy problem even though this might be even though i tell you hey problem number three on the test is an energy problem it might be energy and a free body diagram or we'll do one that's energy and projectile so uh this one if i had asked for the normal force uh, we would need to draw um a free body diagram and 
you know, I think solved for the normal force. Y'all know that the normal force of a rod that's on a uh, collar that's on a rod, normal force between the two, uh, you know, is perpendicular to the rod. So down here at B, the normal force would be either right or left, either right or left. Draw it one way and then guess. Um, and if it comes out negative, it was the other way. So for this one, first of all, you do need to know that the force in a spring is what? We're not talking about energy. It's not one half kx squared. That's energy. That's potential energy. Force is k delta x. So if, if, we, if we know the k is 50, we know the delta x would be 0 0.3. We, we know that force. And so I would just sum the forces in this direction. And don't forget if it's traveling a circular path. So that's the normal direction. I, I would sum the forces normal tangential. So I'd sum the forces in normal, negative K delta X plus N equals not zero, but M V squared over rho. And so now if I know the V, I know the M, I know the, uh, you know everything except for N. All right, so that, that, that one didn't ask one, just throwing that out there. Be able to do that. If I only gave you the first part of that problem, it'd be too easy. Y'all need something more challenging, right? Yes, yes, you do. All right.